The modern NES Famicom, SNES, Super Famicom, and N64 controllers released for Nintendo Switch Online all display their own unique controller icons on the Switch menu when connected. Except for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive controllers which show generic pro controller icons instead. I sense some Nintendo bias at work here. Most of the disc drives for the Famicom Disk System have text printed next to the indicator light on the front, basically telling you not to press the eject button while the light is on and the disc drive is doing its thing. But there are some models out there without that additional text printed on them. I'm guessing it's a difference between earlier and later models, but I'm not 100% sure myself. The label on the bottom of the disk drive that denotes its model number and power rating seems to also come in two different colors, white and pink with the former seemingly more common on earlier models, but again, this has not been completely verified. Nintendo Badge Arcade, God rest its soul, is no longer accessible after the shutdown of online services for the 3DS. Trying to load it now just brings up an error message. However, there has been unused text within the game file since 2016 that hinted at an alternate scenario where the arcade bunny would tell you that the arcade has closed but will still let you manage your badge box for players who have collected more than a thousand badges and have to swap them out. Unfortunately, with the actual shutdown of Nintendo Network, the ability to manage your badge box is also unavailable, leaving you stuck with 1000 badges maximum to decorate your home menu with, unless you've backed up your other badges beforehand. I guess the boss no longer cares about the customers, huh? You may have heard of the official Nintendo anti-piracy website at ap.nintendo.com, which was active from the early 2000s to 2019. But in addition to that, Nintendo was so proud of their anti-piracy efforts that they briefly released anti-piracy newsletters filled with news articles of their latest efforts in combating piracy. Some notable headlines include U.S. Customs will seize the Flash Advance Linker. Counterfeit products destroyed in New Zealand. One million dollars worth of video games seized in Europe. Over 9,000 fake Nintendo video games confiscated in China. Nintendo combats global internet piracy. Uh, good luck on that one. There is a screw hole on the back of the Wii U gamepad, presumably designed for a tripod mount. As far as I know, no officially licensed accessories use this hole. But there are third-party accessories like external battery packs and actual tripod mounts that used it. Mutroid is a minigame in WarioWare Twisted and WarioWare Gold where you play as a cat named Samyao shooting flies with her arm cannon. But these are not the minigame's only appearances, as it also later appeared in the play and media player for the GBA released in 2005, where it is one of the downloadable minigames for the original model and is referred to by the same Japanese name, Nekoroid. In Seven Grand Dad, a Famicom bootleg of The Flintstones, the rescue of Dino and Hoppy for the NES, the copyright info on the bottom has been modified to say 1992 1. You can actually press the select button to change the number on the right from 1 to 5, and it actually serves as a stage select that changes which stage you start at. The Japanese version of Electroplankton for the Nintendo DS is one of the only DS games to ignore the existing branding template for both the box art and game card, having its own unique design for both. I may have bought this version specifically for this video because I just think it's neat. You may have heard of the IQ Player before, which was a variant of the Nintendo 64 released exclusively in China. Notably, it had a different plug-and-play form factor where the controller served as the unit itself, and games were bought and downloaded digitally onto a memory card from download stations or a PC. To provide manuals for the games, simplified digital manuals were made available for players to load on their systems in the form of their own ROMs. You could load them on an N64 with a flashcard if you wanted. But there were also physical manuals made available in stores with their own packaging, which of course contained just the manual booklets and reference cards, usually a direct translation of the original English material. So these manuals are probably the closest one can get to having a physical form of an IQ player game. And finally, there is a typo present in the action guide included with early copies of New Super Mario Bros. 2, where it states that co-op play requires two Nintendo 3DS systems and two game cards and two game cards. They really should have told me earlier it was a typo, man.